this is the couch with our fast. <laughs> Today's show promises to be extremely interesting. In the MAP studios, I have representatives of the NDC, the MPP, and the CPP. Obviously, you know that it's going to be very interesting. This is a show you don't want to miss. Stay with me. Quick commercial break. If you like that. Welcome back, viewers. I would let my guests introduce themselves. I think it's the most effective way to do it today. So, well, my name is Nanad Damo. I represent the New Patriotic Party. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. I'm Samuel Okujeto Ablako of the National Democratic Congress. Okay. And I'm in this person, the National Democratic Party. Okay. Uh, Felix Kwachi for the NDC. I am Stalo Nyako, the MPP. Okay. <laughs> I am Kaleb Usukosi, the student leader. Okay. When you see all these young, vibrant faces, you know that it can only be one topic. Today we are discussing the youth in politics in Ghana. It's, it's a new phenomenon, but is it a positive one? Is it a negative one? What's the way forward? That's the discussion for today. So let me just throw it out there. This is new. Growing up, when we say ministers or parliamentarians or communication people in a, a political party, I'm thinking of my daddy's age mates and older. But these days, all of you here are my mates, literally. What is happening? What is happening? Somebody take a bite. Well, I... I'm not too sure it's a new phenomenon. Mm. Uh, perhaps uh, with uh, you gaining consciousness about the political uh, situation, you were used to very elderly uh, actors in the field. Um, but if you read our history, I mean, mm. we are told about how the CPP, led by Osagi Fubek, Kamen Nkrumah, uh, came to run this nation with very young people mm. I mean, people in their 20s and their 30s if you mention names like uh like kofi Bakun, uh names like jh Manson, who was influential mm. in the seven year development plan he was in his 20s mm. uh, you come to the pndc era you had uh, people like kwame nahoy totobi kwachi uh, atua hoy i mean they were in their 20s uh, mm. there were some who were even 19 um, who were very no, but active, were they active ministers? Yes, were I they mean, not activists? Yeah, I mean, they were. They were. They were. They were secretaries. Um, mm. uh, when when uh, Kwame Nahoy was local government secretary, he was very young. Uh, Kutobi Kwachi was in his in his twenties. Mm. So I think that uh, uh, the trend kept changing in the. Uh, of course, I mean these 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 young activists grew. They became quite elderly by the time uh, the NDC was getting out of power. And then when the uh, the NPP came to power, I think they utilized more of their elders in the front line. I mean, so that's when the septuagenarian, octogenarian, you know, perception An was, was 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 <laughs> was beeping. Uh, mm. Then Professor Mills came and he decided to uh, do a blend mm. of the youth and the old. President Mahama has continued. He's also brought in more young people. Mm. So I would say that uh, our history, our political history as a country, um, is, 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 is not new to young actors giving frontline role. Mm. And there are lots more youth, even in the background, who you don't get to see because they are not active in the mm. media, but uh, they play a very influential role active in our political roles. parties. Enough. Nana, do you agree well, with him? I, I wouldn't take so much of a different position from mm. what has been said so far, except, um, of course, naturally, you expect that I, I have a problem with this allusion to the <laughs> fact that the NPP utilize a lot of old people. But you see, um, I think that, well, yes, Ghana has a history of utilizing young talents. Um, mm. 
the effectiveness of them is, 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 an, is another debate that I hope we'll be able to get into along the line. But mm. within the eight years of the MPP regime, what we believed in was utilizing you know, people in places where they're most effective. Mm. Um, people gain recognition normally or naturally through Ghanaian news when you're seen in the media and you're heard in the media among others. But there were very, very young people who were utilized within the MPP era, but in places that maybe they were not so vocal as people would have expected them to be but we had people like the Pekuka things and the Peri Okuja Toads who are still around who are now people are beginning to you know train and teach others who are perhaps younger than me um, in, in handling some of these matters so that's the only uh, you know, correction that I want to put up but aside that essentially I do not think that having young people in the Ghanaian political space is anything new it's something that has continued over time the debate however would lie on the effectiveness of, of these people of, you know. yeah. because naturally as a very young person i tend to believe that it is not about giving the space to young people but it's about a development of a country we are a developing country we are saying we are middle income lower middle income among others it's about the utilization of the best talents possible if that talent happens to be an 80 year old boy why not but if that talent also happens to be a 40 year old boy why not now, yes. now this is where i have a little problem and i'm sure i'm not alone is it about talent too? This is governance. This is not private. If I'm, if, you know, if I have my private business and I decide to, you know, experiment with, you know, a couple of young, vibrant, passionate people, that's well and good. But this is governance. This is national. Yes, that's that's where I was saying that the debate of effectiveness is what we can get into. Mm. But you see, all over the world, there's a growing trend towards the youthful individuals. Especially with the advent of technology, among others, Mark Zuckerberg was, is, is, is her old, but he's one of the most effective people. Before he got the chance to lead Facebook, among others, he had. No I was going to say that social media. <laughs> yeah, but that's social I'm media. Say that's but social in the media. business world, that's one of the highest ranking businesses and the fastest growing businesses ever built. Mm. Look at Twitter, look at um, Google, look at all the advent of these things. Google is practically changing the world in every sphere that you can think of. They perhaps have more applications available than you and I can track. Mm. And they've, they've, they've become a household name through the innovations that such young people are bringing up. I do not think that the Ghanaian youth is any different in terms of brain power, in terms of intelligence. Mm. It is just that over the years, perhaps we've not been able to put in place the necessary mechanisms to ensure such talents are utilized. And I'm speaking specifically with reference to technology. Mm. However, in terms of governance, we've, we've gotten it right in a way gotten it right in a way and um yeah I'll, I'll tell you that we've gotten it right in a way there are one or two lapses that sometimes make us all you know i like to put it on record that nana says you've gotten governance right in ghana no i didn't say you've gotten <laughs> governance right in ghana let's let me clarify my point i'm talking about i'm talking about utilization of youthful talent okay we've gotten it right I in a corrected. way in a way mm. and you know specifically that we'll get to it as the debate goes on we need to perhaps you know find a way of harmonizing what we've done so far find a way of institutionalizing it making it more systematic to mm. ensure that we are able to identify people. because if i tell you how i got into politics you'd be shocked that's it that, i'm that's, pretty that's sure it, that it, you know all the individuals <laughs> all the individuals here as well i mean everybody time. here perhaps has, has a more we'll, we'll try and we'll try to get in there yeah because some so, of us are curious about you know how you get in so uh, we'll come we'll come to yeah. let me just have um felix and ns then so I don't have a bike, you know. In Ghana, for instance, it is a function of our demographics. If you check our population dynamics, you mm -hmm. find that there are over 60% of them who belong to the youthful bracket. Mm -hmm. There's no way you are going to run a country and achieve the desired impact if these 60% or so do not buy into your vision and come along with you. Mm -hmm. Invariably, there will be some amongst them who would want to contribute or who would show potential, which if tapped, could help achieve the overall objective of the country. I don't believe that there's anything wrong at all with young people finding space within the political environment. Mm. And the evidence is that those young people who have been given opportunities to serve in government have acquitted themselves well. I mean, some spoke is about... Is that the evidence, Absolutely. Joe? And I, I could, I could, I could, the evidence, I could provide Joe evidence Felix? to back my assertion. Okay. Some spoke about the PNDC era. I mean, mm. who in this country can dispute that those young people indeed worked very hard to transform the fortunes of this nation. They picked up a country whose uh, growth rates were in the negative, a country that had inflation 
at over 127 percent and brought it on the path of growth by the time that the years started. So I don't think that anybody can discount the effort that they put in. Mm -hmm. There have been many people who have been given the opportunity historically who have demonstrated a competence. Mr. G.H. Mensah at the age of 27 was mm -hmm. one of the key brains behind the seven-year development plan of uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, President Kufo at the age of 29 was made a deputy minister for foreign affairs. That is no mean achievement. I mean, mm. in many ways, he contributed to preparing him to take the highest office of the land. So I don't think there's any dispute at all about the capability that young people possess. Mm. There's something to be said for experience yes. and, and age, but there's also yeah. a lot to be said for innovation and dynamism, which the youth have in abundance. Today's or world... How it is not just about youthful exuberance. Again, it is a criticism that I find are difficult to accept. Mm. An impression is created as though young people are prone to recklessness and that every mistake they make is a result of inexperience Eight. or youthful exuberance. Mm. I don't think so. Some of the acts of omission or commission that have happened on the path or that have taken place uh, involving young people can also be found in persons who you would consider elderly. I do not want to go into specifics. But I don't think that that allegation against young people is fair at all. I believe that they ought to be given the chance, especially within especially within the context Somebody's very happy with that especially point. within the context <laughs> of a global environment that uh -huh. has seen many many young people take up very very top leadership positions in the world i mean david Cameron, at the age of 39 or so was the leader of the conservative party a conservative party which mm -hmm. normally would uh, look more towards people with experience and and, and age injured. on their side uh, president <laughs> obama in his early 40s was able to get himself elected into the white house in the 60s there was kennedy who took the American political state by storm when he was in his 40s and managed to beat uh, Richard Nixon, who was mm -hmm. much elderly, because the American people saw in him the potential for effective administration of their country. Mm -hmm. So uh, in a nutshell, I think that the points that my colleagues have raised are very valid, and there's every reason and justification to have young people in government or any other leadership position uh, for that matter. Let's, let's, let's talk about experience. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's just break it down. Let's break down the issues. That's my experience. If any young person wants to go for any job in this country, experience is a requirement. You know, we, we all agree, don't we? You, you yeah, have that, to have some experience. Yeah. But there appears to, have to some be a, experience. You know, some, so a little bit of confusion with the link between experience and age. Most people equate experience to be age, and that, that, that's a fundamental problem. Uh, for instance, in the various political party models that we operate, there are people who have you know, worked in various leadership positions over a period of time. Though they may be young, some people start as early as 18 years, 19 years, and by the time he's 28, 29, has garnered over 20, you know, 10 years experience. No, no, no. If I talk of experience, now, I'm, I'm not just you know, talking about just something in a vacuum. I'm talking about specific. Let's take somebody like Felix. Felix is a deputy minister for information. Sami, you are the deputy minister for education. Let's talk specific experience. But the point I'm making here is that you see, you can never gain experience as a deputy minister until you've been in that position. However, there are other leadership positions that you can take that will be direct preparation for a position like that. Now, you find within the various political parties several roles that will prepare you to take up such such a job mm. so you may find somebody with a political party that is 30 years old mm. but may have close to 10 years experience in various leadership positions that mm. are supposed to prepare you for those things yes we must not toy with the destiny of our country by appointing your fights into various positions mm. but we must not also make that fundamental mistake of equating experience to with age. age that's that's problematic okay. for instance don't say that because somebody has 40 is 40 years old you know he necessarily, has, he has some necessarily experience. He has, he has built that capacity mm. to take on leadership of a country. That's not necessarily true. Mm. You may find a younger person. But moving generally into the discussion of experience, yes, it's relevant. For a developing country like Ghana, you cannot say that we should let you know, experimentalists take over the economy or you should let experimentalists take over leadership positions that we have in this country. But there are people who are young mm. who have also been prepared adequately. To take those positions. Let's talk about the preparation. Let's let's move swiftly into preparation. Salon. You would envisage uh, that most of us come into politics with varied intents. Mm -hmm. But bottom line is, basic form of preparation we can get from uh, for young people in leadership is to mirror the lives of those who have been there already. Mm. It appears we are making the discussion. Uh, should I say? Should I say superficial? <laughs> but on the ground, most of the young people want to be heard. 
we want to become the big guys we see overnight. Mm -hmm. And it comes with so much. We find them easily taking or easily accepting those controversial ones. Size of politics. Yeah. For example, yesterday my brother was in the news. Uh, he was um, running, <laughs> running down Dr. Uh, uh, let's not get into all of that. Well, let's not get into all of that. <laughs> let's not get into all of that. No, you, you, you are making your discourse official. This is a platform mm. uh, that is supposed to address the issues. You understand? So let, let's talk about these basics. There's nothing superficial about all of us being in agreement right, on an right. issue. It's yeah. not superficial. <laughs> I was going to say mm. that the point that he, he just made illustrates the, 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 the difficulty I have that an act of indiscretion on the part of a public appointee or a public official who happens to be in the 30s simply came about because of her age. Mm -hmm. If it is the case that she said a few things that people deem to be unpalatable, we can find a myriad of examples within the system of people within their sixties and seventies who have said far west things. West things, I agree. Yeah. So is anybody going to attribute uh, those acts of indiscretion to the age or if you like the experience or the number of years that those who have spent in government? Mm. Uh, I don't believe that it would be proper to do that kind of analysis. Again, I think that there's a certain social cultural angle to this whole debate that we have not looked at. Mm. Our society generally tends to stifle the opinions of young people. And therefore, even in the home, you are not allowed to question authority. You are not allowed to probe decisions that your parents make for you. I don't think that we can continue along those lines. There's nothing wrong with an 18-year-old, a teenager, mm. criticizing the conduct of a PhD holder if he deems the conduct of that individual to be inimical to the interest of the nation. Mm. So if I happen to criticize Dr. Baumia because I believe that some conduct of his is not consistent with my expectation as a young person or as a citizen of Ghana, it should not be held against me by virtue of my age. There are others who are much older than Dr. Baumia, whom he has criticized in the past. And I don't think that you can begrudge him his right to criticize them merely because they are older than him. I don't think that it is proper to pigeonhole young people in that manner. Let us allow a free and frank expression of views amongst all sections of our population, irrespective of their age. Of course, we I, I associate myself fully with a caution that goes out to young people to show circumspection and modesty and discretion in the way that they carry themselves. But mm -hmm. it should not in any way inhibit them from expressing themselves as forcefully as they can, just so that sense that they have will reach the, the appropriate quarters for it to be addressed. And as young people, if we begin to pigeonhole ourselves and become skeptical about the progress that other young people are making mm. simply on account of what we may have heard other people say about them, mm. I do not believe that it all gets well for all of us. Because we it's have a stake mm. in the way that this country is run. We are all in agreement here. Yeah. Well, generally, we are all in agreement here. I wanted um, NS to come in. Okay, I, I was I also looking NS. to just... You hold on to the problem. thoughts. We'll come back to you. Okay, thank you so much. I think, um, basically, as you said, we are all in agreement that young people indeed ought to be given the opportunity to, you know, participate in governance. Um, there's a new thinking around the world that the youth are not only tomorrow's leaders, but indeed leaders even for the no. present. Exactly. So I think it's a general thinking around the world that, yes, young people ought to be given the opportunity to participate in the governance process. But then you ask a very critical question, uh, which has to do with our preparation. Um, how prepared are young people, you know, um, in taking leadership positions? Now we have to ask ourselves, what is the process by which young people get into leadership positions? For example, in the present government, we know that a lot give of, us examples young, of yourself. How, exactly. How do you... We have lots of young ministers. And if you, you know, check their backgrounds, most of them are former student leaders. Okay, I'm sure most of us around this all of team, here, all actually. of us here, I'm sure. One I'm way or the other. Oh, with the exception of you, Nana. Yeah, I am not. Nana That's... is the exception to the rule. Okay. But I'm sure we all have one way or the other. It's not clear if students refuse to vote for him. <laughs> no, I never... Yes, I never, we need to find no, that out. To, 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 clarify, to, clarify, to clarify that, I never stood for any student leadership. Okay. okay. I never contested... It's an important question. Okay. 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 Student leadership at that time did not appeal to me because of, of, of the rancor surrounding it, because of 
the sort of things that had come up surrounding it. Okay. Speak of any student leader now. You get people who recite allegations against, against those individuals. Them. I mean, I, I think it's all part of it. I do not want to pigeonhole myself. You have gone into. You see, to, 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 make it, to clean it up. Well, yes, that's but that's right. it, will, it, will come, it will come to that point of <laughs> systems and how they work. But I, I necessarily felt that, you know, it's, it's, you have to take a step back and study systems and understand systems. I worked very closely with a lot of student leaders, but I was not prepared to, one, to, to one go nine. into that thing and then embroil myself with all those allegations that have come up against practically everybody mm. who has become a student leader before. Yeah, so just to continue your point, um, and are you saying that maybe you never even held a class profession before? Well, um, if you go back to my, my primary education, then yes, I consistently from class one to class six. Exactly, class prefect, exactly. So that's that, it's also a form of leadership. Yeah. So that's where it starts from. Almost all of us, I'm sure at one point in time, we were class prefects and then we move on to tertiary and then it follows us. <laughs> <laughs> For me, in looking at preparation, mm. I think we need to look at our educational system. How well does it train young people to take up leadership positions? For me, that is very critical. Mm. What kind of educational system are we running? Does it prepare us? Forget the specific roles you've been assigned to. Let's forget that you are... Actually, yours is even right in line with the youth. Felix, information. As ministers, and I'm hitting on, you know, the two of you because you, you are in, in government. Do you find that you have a responsibility as young people towards the youth in this country? Do you, do you find that aside, aside your assigned roles, you have to have... Um, I think it's Chinua Ashibe who talks of the um, African writer's burden. You know, the fact that you're an African writer, you have a burden to project African literature. Do you feel that as young people in power, you have a burden to project African, you know, youth issues? As, as public officials, our first and foremost uh, responsibility is towards the nation to conduct our affairs in a manner that ignores the benefits of the humanity of our people. Uh, it would be erroneous to hold the view that merely because one finds himself within the age bracket of the youth, then you have to act in ways that only feathers the interest of the youth. I don't think that that would be proper. It would actually defeat the purpose for which you go into government. I appreciate that being young persons, others look up to you uh, for opportunity. Others look up to you to perform in a way that justifies uh, the further inclusion of young people uh, in government. So yes, we are mindful of the need to carry ourselves in a way that makes it easier for others to uh, climb to the heights that we have got into. But our first and foremost responsibility is the nation as well. As I would imagine, the responsibility of even those who we consider to be elderly would be towards the entire nation and not to people with me in their age bracket. I think that the discourse ought to be much broader than gender. When young people say that when we are a young person, we expect you to do something for Sometimes it's difficult to appreciate exactly what uh, is expected of you. Yeah, perhaps they mean that you have to put in a word for us at every stage to ensure that we are considered for some uh, benefit. I think that that perception is wrong. It sends the wrong signals. It is not as though young people go into government or young people aspire to leadership positions just because they are young and they want to make sure that all other young people benefit from their presence in government. That would be parochial. I believe that it is more important that we look at what would be in the interest of the larger society. If through our performance mm. we make a strong case for young people being included in government, then that offers scope for the inclusion of more young people. So That's it's great. Uh, Sami, before you come in, I understand what Felix is saying, but, and I'm speaking now as a woman, you know, when I see women in high positions, I have some expectation of them. You know, I do. I do. And I think that it's legitimate. I'm not saying that even if you are talking about some random issue, you bring in child rights or you bring in youth policy. No, that's what I'm saying. But do you feel, you, you personally, do you feel the need to champion some specific causes for the youth in this country? Yeah, I, I certainly feel that need. And if you even come to appreciate the nature of our constitution, Presidents are admonished by the Constitution to reflect the nation. 
the demographics. Mm. To the, there should be regional balance, mm. gender balance. Why do you think the framers of the constitution put these clauses in the constitution? In my mind, the framers of the constitution wanted our government to be very inclusive and that it should be national in character and that we should at all times have people who remember where they have come from, mm. remember their constituencies and they should be real people who are in touch and who also appreciate the concerns of the various constituencies who they represent. Not necessarily political constituencies in terms of demarcations, but in terms of various backgrounds, gender, and all of that. So I believe that looking at how our constitution is framed and how presidents have made appointments mm. so that they make sure that the 10 regions are represented, they make sure that women are represented, the youth is represented, the agent is represented, and all of that. We even have a council of state Mm. where uh, a president can totally mm. utilize and really get, you know, good old wisdom, you know, from our gray hair, uh, from the age uh, uh, gray, gray hair <laughs> elders. So I, I believe that this construction mm. gives room that in, in, in this appointment, you should always be conscious of the fact that, yes, you owe a responsibility to the nation. Mm. The appointment you have been given, if you are in education, if you are in roads, yes, that's your mandate, first priority. But you should also remember that your constituency is also looking up to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that how we should have that in mind is not by encouraging a system of patronage, mm -hmm. where I agree with Felix, mm -hmm. but try to give off your best so that you do not let your constituency down. You do not let... Um, you do not forget the issues that are really beneficial to the group that you have been chosen from. Mm -hmm. I think that that is very, very critical. Mm -hmm. And we need to discuss how we can most effectively achieve that end. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, increasingly some people think that because you are youth, all the youth should head towards mm -hmm. you and should probably get favors mm -hmm. today or immediately. Mm -hmm. I think we should be looking at you know, greater objectives is this person able to deliver? How can we support, send input, send memos, send emails, mm -hmm. you know, contact him, social media, and make sure that, you know, we are engaging him, we are debating him, we are making sure that he is always conscious, he is not lost in all the, mm -hmm. you know, busyness mm -hmm. of, of, of his office. I think that that linkage is critical, and you, you are not wrong in seeing women in political office and expecting that they should always be conscious of the gender yeah. issue. And uh, I believe that we all have something to bring to the table based on our backgrounds, mm -hmm. based on our constituencies and, you know, what our makeup is. Mm -hmm. well, no, no. Um, not to take us back. Just a, a, a short critique. Yeah, fundamentally, I want to go back to an earlier point you made about political leaders not having so not doing resides, not having everything at, at, at the beck and call. Mm -hmm. I think that that expectation comes about also as a result of how we campaign and how we go through the processes. Because, you know, we've managed to do this discussion so far, eliminating the idea of partisanship. Yeah. But you can't take that out. Mm -hmm. In the current regime that we are, you cannot take that out. Um, I don't know how various youth within the MDC, for instance, will see an appointment of an MPP person, no matter how how sharp he is, no matter mm. how intelligent he is, no matter what he's able to contribute to the development of the country. Mm. I'm not so sure how youth within the MDC would receive such an appointment. Neither am I so sure of how youth within the MPP as so well. So it's not politics, see, isn't it? It's receive. propaganda. I, I, I wouldn't call that propaganda. That's factual. But I'm not sure of how that will play out. As a result of that, what you have is that essentially, though you're running a country, you're limited in, in terms of your choice of appointment that you can practically make. There's no two ways about that. And so, in a way, yes, you're running a country, you need the best resources possible. But practically, you know, due to how we campaign, due to how we do our politics in this country, you're limited. You, the stream is limited. You have to appoint within a particular stream of things. Mm -hmm. We cannot also ignore the fact that there's a politics of patronage in this country. Those who have contributed, those who have actually been out there for you, are people who will expect appointment in return. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you sideline these individuals and then you have all these demonstrations about appointment of DCs and all of that going on. Mm. If, 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 you go to, 
Nana is taking us into other areas. Nana is taking us into other areas. If I can just have a quick one on that. I'm not too sure if Nana is entirely accurate. Mm. Because I recall that President Kufu managed to reach out. He appointed uh, Papa Kwesindum from the CPP. From the CPP. Uh, he appointed Malamisa from the PNC. Mm -hmm. President Mahama has currently done that. He's mm -hmm. appointed Dr. Remo Tuguba from the PNC as his executive secretary. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sule Gariba mm -hmm. is not, it's not, yeah. it's, a, it's a senior policy advisor, wow. not, not, not known yeah. to be an NDC mm -hmm. activist. Uh, you I like can, the fact you that can, said not known. you can, you can, yes, not known. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, he has publicly stated that he did some work for the MPP, the Chinuhesi report, mm -hmm. you know, Ali Umar, yeah, a special yeah. advisor and all of that. He's publicly stated that, that he works for Ghana. Mm -hmm. He doesn't work for parties. And I think we should give him that credit. Uh, we've had some ministers who you will not say that. I mean, who, who, who knew before her appointment that mm -hmm. my boss, Professor Nana Jinokoko Ajiman, had any MDC affiliation? Somebody like Nana Oyelita, mm -hmm. critical activist, mm -hmm who I mean, was critical of the NDC, of the MPP. Mm. So I'm not too sure presidents are that limited or parties are that well, intolerant. <laughs> I think we have, no, we have no, had, no. we've had, I, I we've had presidents I reaching made, out. I made the point I made. And I think we like yeah. those, those I, points. I made the As point, Ghanians, we like those that kind of points. I made very, I, I love very, them. burying all of these appointments in mind. But I'm saying that practically, look, look through the nation. Mm. The people we have at the helm of affairs of the nation today are not necessarily the best people to handle the very first point they're handling. No, 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 That's so unfair. That's so unfair. That's so unfair. What criteria are you using? Can I, can I, can I make the point? It's not fair to you can make the point, but I have a question for you. Thank you. How are you measuring? If I'll be allowed to land on that point, then the questions can come in and then We'll okay, but you. briefly, please let's not go into the just what, what I say by that, what I say by that is basically considering nothing but you know, just look at expertise for instance. Don't look at anything about expertise for expertise. Us. I want everybody to think on it. No, can I, Nana, can hold I, on. I want everybody to think I'm not, about I'm not expertise. Being allowed let's think about it. Nana, you'll be allowed to finish. You'll be allowed to finish. Thought. Thought. No, don't give us give us give us give us specific examples. Sami and Anna, give me a minute. I'm going for a quick commercial before I come back. Please think on it, especially. We come back. Short break. Welcome back from the break. I'd like to make the point again that even though we have representatives from the NDC, NPP, CPP, this is not a political discussion. We are just looking at the youth in politics, how effective they are being, and if I may, I'll say the how of the politics and not the politics. I would like to let the student leaders have a say. We have, we have, we have some of them here. We have an SRC president, we have a new executive. Let, let's hear you, your impression so far. What I want to say is that there's no doubt about it that, and nobody can need the fact that students or youths must be involved in government. No doubt about it. Now, where are the leaders coming from? We talk about that. If a youth, at some point of our discourse, we realize that we're looking at the preparation. How can you be prepared if you don't have experience? I can prepare you now, but I think that you can add that point when you're experienced. Now, I, I strongly believe that if you look at the trend of our economy from that time, colonial time, to the uh, time of uh, democratic discrimination, now, Dr. Kamil Kumar became a uh, <coughs> prime minister. Let's say he broke up from even, even UGCC with some couple of youths at the age of 39 years in the former city. Now, uh, uh, former president for appoint was appointed at the age of 29 deputy minister. So we looked at their involvement from that time till now. Is it useful? Now, I always say that we don't have to look at some few people and say that because youths involvement in governance and uh, as at that time, that era, are not really profitable or really enhancing as we expecting. For that matter, I can be based on that and say that they are not useful. I always say that it's about the training. Now, I don't believe that single, single or individual will just sit down and always want the, the, the development or what you expect as a nation because of one person. You can just look at it and say that you are not, you are not grooming, you are not grooming productivity. I get to my point. But I strongly believe that it's the time 
or if government or if some few people or some stakeholders can identify some people and groom them, I believe in grooming. Groom them that at least these people are very potential leaders tomorrow. To so groom them very well, it's not about politics. Like, like Honorable said, uh, President Kofo appointed some people who are not part of the uh, President Mahama also did equally the same. I think that identify some people, groom them. They are the youth. I don't know they, the old die and go. But uh, whatever, those are uh, Asian people. They the young die too. The young die too. The young die too. We are learning now. <laughs> Gone are the days where some of them were so appointed. My last point is that you have to sit down and be appointed before you can contribute to the governor. That's a valid point. Let's have the look executive. For me, I think that I wish we broaden the discussion to the role of the youth in national development. Because if we want to just limit it to politics, um, maybe it will not be the best. For me, I they think... Are, they, are, they are saying so. All right. For me, I, I think that um, it is often said that the youth are the future of this nation or the country. But I think that we are key partners of today. And therefore, the active involvement of the youth in the nation building process is it's very important. As Felix rightly said, the population of the youth is, is almost about 50% or so. And therefore, if majority of the citizens of this country um, constitute a youthful um, society, then I think that we cannot underscore the, the role that the youth needs to play in nation development. I, I also strongly feel that the youth are always beaming and bubbling with enthusiasm and passion to work. And so wherever you put them, you realize that they are always often ready to give up their best. Mm. If we want to talk about some of the youthful leaders that we have today, the likes of Felis, Aruna, Kucheto and Co. These are people that we look up to, irrespective of wh whatever political platform that, that you come from. These are people that we look up to that once they are able to discharge their duties very well, it gives us an opportunity and a reason to say that the youth are always ready to give up their best. So for me, I think that let us detach the political aspect of this issue. And for once, whilst we have all these people coming from different political parties, agree on the fact that the youth have a significant role to play in national development. Thank you. I agree with you. I, I, I agree with you. One, 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 let me, one tip, you know, issue from where he left off. Once we are all here, let's, let's, let's have, you know, some specifics. So in your individual party, in your individual party, how effective are you? And I'm asking this question because this is personal. I'm going to allow everyone to say something. This is a very personal, you know, uh, issue. I'm asking this question because sometimes, and I'm sure you've heard this before, it has come up that young people in positions, smart of tokenism, smart of, let's put some of them there for cosmetic, you know, reasons. We want to know how effective are you being in your individual party towards national development? Well, to, to, to my very first problem with that is that we will not have, we are not the most efficient people to judge. No, our I want own you to critique yourself. But that's that's a very difficult thing to do because, in all humility, I cannot say that I will be a very objective person in analyzing myself. It's up to my superiors and those who put me in those various positions. Try. But if you are talking about the Try. roles that we play mm. in, in our various political parties, I think that it's obvious for every person who is a keen observer of the political space in Ghana to tell. Um, you know, I, I hear daily, daily, it, it looks as though I'm, I'm of the personal opinion that Felix has been assigned specific roles and he, he, he does that quite well. Um, the Honorable Deputy Minister here has also been assigned some specific roles that he is doing. That is not to say that I agree with their politics, but they do uh, express their roles and they discharge whatever duties it is that they've been given. And so I, I, I respect them in those positions and I honestly think that that affected. We are also, personally, I'm given certain roles that perhaps I cannot disclose all of them, but yes, they are very, very key towards the development of my political party and sometimes in contributing to key national discourse on matters that affect the livelihoods of all of us. Mm -hmm. And so I cannot, in, in all honesty and with, with, with all sincerity, say that we are not effective. You realize that the young people in the political parties are believed to be the ones doing most of the resources on social media, you know, everywhere. Felix, you are shaking your head. There's one issue which 
we've all had, you know, come to a certain agreement too, that um, the our institutional uh, education institutions are indeed a breeding grounds, and then the student leadership platform also is also a very useful platform for grooming leaders. I would like to seize this opportunity to make a recommendation to the whole nation that we should consider having a national leadership institute of some sort, so that legislation when, or policy. No, so that um, student leaders would have the opportunity to attend this particular institute and gain experience. Wouldn't it be a talk shop? No, it will not because personally, when I was a student leader, I benefited from several you know, workshops and seminars that I attended and it has really helped me. But I'm thinking that if we had um, a streamlined program, because you see, someone comes out of school freshly and the person gets the opportunity to serve you know, in, 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 in government. And if you are now, taking us back, no, I not we are agreeing that. No, the point I'm making is that, you know. see, in our various education institutions, leadership is not a subject that is taught. Let's be frank with ourselves. Leadership is not a subject that is taught in our schools. Unless you finish and you attend seminars and um, workshops and other yeah, things. But you contested for, for parliament. How exactly. have you a leader? Exactly, but see how prepared was I at that time? Okay, yes, I may have won, yes, I may have gone to parliament, but the point I'm making is that I could have been a better candidate at that time if I had more training, okay. more exposure. So let's consider the idea of a national leadership institute where student leaders can go periodically while they are in school and get more training because now it's become clear. It's now it's become clear that student leadership platform is quite useful in grooming uh, the leaders for our nation. I disagree. <laughs> well, well, I think on that score, I, I, I would agree with uh, Nana. Formalized or formal training in leadership may have its place, but I don't believe it is the ultimate uh, that one should go for in terms of uh, bringing up a new kid or a new crop of, of leaders. I think that leaders ought to be produced out of the experiences that a nation goes through, out of the exigencies of the time. Kada is, however, partisan. If you can well, it from not, the it's, simply, it's, it's, it's simply uh, represents a group of people who, 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 who uh, share a common ideology. There's nothing partisan about it. Within our I was shaking my head when. No, no. When, when, I was shaking my head when uh, Nanama uh, made a point or suggested that most of the insults that we hear. Facebook. We hear uh, in our country uh, come from persons that you can classify as youth. There's actually empirical research conducted by the West African Media Foundation or Media Foundation for West Africa. I would urge you to obtain copies of their research and read. You will find that some of the most scurrilous, outrageous commentary that I cannot repeat on this platform have come from people who are septuagenarians and octogenarians. It would be useful for you to undertake that research. I spoke about a certain social cultural mindset that people approach the involvement of young people in politics with. We are not used to a society where young people are assertive and question the status quo and demand that things ought to be done in a particular way. And so often when young people commit the same mistakes that people within the older generation commit, they are immediately pigeonholed and told that it's because they are inexperienced or it's because they are young people. I think that as a nation, we ought to approach young people's involvement in leadership with an open mind mm -hmm. and allow them the opportunity to also contribute their quota towards national development. When we do that, I believe we will be bringing out the best in our young people because capability and competence, I do not believe, is, is the preserve of the older generation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very much ascribe to the second line of this reasoning that there is a socio-cultural perspective to this movement. He mentioned that he can uh, give a tall list of people who have made very disparaging comments, who have not been neutral. But again, we are looking at a culture that frowns on, like he mentioned, uh, youthful assertiveness. When you're young, you're very much assertive. So let's try the balance. When you're young, you play within the boundaries. This is Africa. Uh, let's not no, let's not even let's talk about assertiveness. I'm talking plain insults. I'm not talking about somebody assessing no, it you is know, our, himself. Some, some assertive nature that, at the end of the day, are explained to be insults. 
like I mentioned, we don't leave the discourse at just the superficial area. There is a practical state out there. I like the practicality of issues. So if you are youth, and for example, you are sitting do. on a set with uh, somebody like Nana, you don't go call him a fruitcake and expect that you have been a set. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Likewise, I can't go and look up to President Muhammad in this place and tell him, uh, Your Excellency, I think Russia be blessed. I think in public, this is Africa. We have better ways of putting it across. You understand? Mm -hmm. Back to social media. Like you said, some people have to talk with givers. Some people have strong with givers, with certain people, okay, uh, throwing some dimensions. You find a young man pontificating on corruption, pontificating on morality, but very much in his own backyard. You cannot stand up and count the very issues of morality and corruption and the course. So let's do proper check. Let's try the balance, accept the society for ourselves. And then uh, they, will, they will come to the point that we are also being accepted. We are not, we mean no disrespect. We are also trying to help the government. What is wrong should be wrong. What is right should be right. It doesn't matter who is talking about it. Mm. If something is wrong, let's encourage everybody, be you baby, toddler, child, mm. adult, mm. to identify wrongness and condemn it. So I'm not sure about the different settings, Africa and all of that. Mm. It may just be a nice way of, you know, asking people to be timid and to uh, avoid mm -hmm you know, being forthright mm -hmm. and being, being, being right, being transparent. Let us encourage that attitude which allows all of us to condemn what must be condemned and to uh, praise what is worthy of emulation. I think it's all the submissions by uh, my uh, friends to them leaders. They, some of them made a, the, the point that they are not Politicians. I'm sure what they wanted to say is that we are not we are not partisan. Yeah, because I mean, once you stood for election, you've been elected as Luke's yeah, executive, SRC executive. You are a student politician. Mm -hmm. The point that NS makes about uh, a national leadership institute is worth looking at. Um, except that I disagree when he says for student leaders. It should be okay. for everybody, mm -hmm. every young person who, you know. I I am even more for leadership being introduced. I know some of our higher institutions of learning have introduced leadership models, leadership courses as part of the general curriculum. And I think that it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good um, initiative which ought to be broadened mm -hmm. so that we can have, because leadership is not only in national politics. Even in the church, you need good leaders. In business, you need good leaders. In the home, you need good leaders. Some people are just disastrous in homemaking. <laughs> yeah. They think that it's just about uh, loving the opposite sex and then that's it. You know, we, we go home and make babies. Now, le leadership is right from the home. Mm -hmm. and the future of our country starts from the home, the family setting and all of that. I also think that the political parties owe a duty to this nation. Now that it's emerging since independence that young people have a role to play none of our political parties seem to have a well-organized you know youth grooming institution gotcha. within the parties it's it's more uh, like they're out fishing tapping for talent one day the talent will be finished or will not be <laughs> obvious you know so let the parties also have an institutional way of grooming their leaders have party schools mm -hmm. i'm happy my general secretary has mooted that idea publicly i <laughs> I want to see the day that it will come to fruition where all of us can go to school occasionally on leadership. Even on our ideological ethos, social democracy, there are many people today joining parties, they don't really know, oh, my mother voted for so, this party, my father voted for that party. So I think that <clears throat> the political parties to owe a duty to the nation to have this uh, leadership institutions institutionalized within the parties mm. to groom us and make us as young people more effective not only for our party, for our nation. Because considering the fact that all the parties have the potential to come to power. I mean, of course, after the NDC have uh, been in power for a very long time, and the uh, uh, Ghanaians want to say that, <coughs> thank you, thank you for all your good works. Just go and take a little rest and come back. Uh, until such a time, it's important that um, we, 
we we have our parties <laughs> training <coughs> training more young people. I, I dare say that I, I hold the opposite view of that. that yes, I, think I was Ghanians, just waiting for you. Ghanaians cannot wait to see the back of the NDC. But on a more serious note, um, in a large measure, we made very valid points here today. For me, the emphasis is that yes, we must all come to accept the point that youthfulness in governance. Is, is a phenomenon that has been there and it has come to stay. We mm -hmm. cannot wish it away. We must, however, find ways and means of, as some has said, institutionalizing it, mm -hmm. making it more systematic, finding ways and means of tapping talent, identifying talent, and grooming talent. For the youth as well, you know, I want to say that let us not be in a rush to assume positions of leadership. Let's understand the fact that the leadership aspect of it can be learned. And you need to undergo that period of, of studies for that. I, I, I dare say that my colleagues here will, will tell you that being in a political party is not about just getting up one day and being thrown out there into the public domain. Mm -hmm. You actually have to go through a very rigorous process. My only regret is that as a noun, it is not very well structured, it is not systematic. But moving forward, uh, as a nation, we would have to find, agree and find ways and means of establishing that and making it structured and systematic, whilst we as a youth as well should always have it at the back of our minds to have every available opportunity to learn. Mm. That learning factor is key. It may take years, it may take hours. Sometimes you do jobs that you cannot see the way forward. But in the long run, in the long run, I assure you do know and believe that it will pay off. That should be at the back of every you know, possible leader, every possible activist, every possible person, young person, that wants to be seen in the governance processes of this country. It would pay off. That's what Nana says. Nana says, I believe that it's everybody in this room hope that ultimately governance pays off. It has been very interesting today. Um, it's been very informative. I wish we could do more. I wanted to delve into other areas, like how, you know, a specific honorable went into politics. But time would not permit us. I'm sure that next time when we call on you, you come again. Thank you so much for being here. It's been very educated. I also would like to thank my audience. As usual, you are the best. <laughs> it's been a wonderful show. This is The Couch. I'm Amma Pratt. Same time, same place. See ya.